Hey, so it's been six months since I first started treatment and it's finally coming to an end. Tomorrow is my last chemo, hopefully ever. My last chemo, I've done 12 by tomorrow and I am beyond relieved that this is over. I don't really know where to start this video. I'm gonna try to make a little structure in it, but mainly I'm gonna be raw and honest about my experience. And this is not to offend anyone or to scare anyone, but just remember it is about cancer, it is about a deadly disease. And I wanna share my feelings, my opinions, my experience, and I wanna do it genuinely. So I already spoke about my diagnosis in a previous video. I just wanna talk a little bit about getting the diagnosis and about waiting for a diagnosis when you get cancer. I had just gotten back here. I had just gone back to California from Sweden to study and I was ready for a new for a new chapter in my life. I was ready to start school again after a few years of being off. And when I went to the hospital and I took all those scans and all those tests the first time, when the doctor and I sat in a small room with no windows and he told me that I have a big mass growing inside of my chest. How do you respond to that? I really didn't know how to react. I'm not this person who just reacts in panic. I'm more the quiet kind who just sits there and I'm like... And then obviously it hit me and obviously you start thinking about life, you start thinking about death. And it took two weeks until they told me what kind of cancer I had. The doctor saying, you have, you probably have cancer, but you have no idea what kind of cancer it is, you have no idea how bad it is, if, if it's what stage it is, if it's curable, if it's treatable. I had to think about a lot of things to be able to stay. I had to figure out my living situation, I had to figure out if my insurance was gonna cover, cover the treatment, I had to talk to the school, to my professors. It was just a lot of things happening at the same time, but mainly, it was so scary during those two weeks to not be sure if I was going to live or die during the next few months. I didn't know if they were going to call me and tell me, you just have a few months left to live. Um, we're so sorry, this is not treatable. You know, you st when you hear that you probably have cancer, but they have to make more tests to see what you have. And when the only thing you know is that you have a growing mass inside of you, First of all, it's that moment when you realize that the doctors just told you what you have always feared that they're gonna tell you. And I just kept thinking about, I just started thinking back to my life. I started thinking about my experiences, how I've been treating people, how people have been treating me. I started thinking about safety spots, whether it's a hug from someone I care about, whether it's a place whether it's a conversation, um, anything that would just make me feel like I belong somewhere. I started missing people so much. There was something inside of me that said that I'm not gonna die. I'm not gonna die yet, it's not my time. I have so much more to give to this world than this. My life is just starting. I'm gonna live, I wanna live. And I remember like, there was times when I just when I was driving somewhere and I just had to stop at the at the side of the road and I would just cry, 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 and I would pray to God, to the angels, to whatever whatever it is that you believe in. I'm not sure, but I would I would call myself a spiritual person, so but I would just say, let me live, and I would drive around, I would walk around, I would talk to people, and I would just I kept thinking about if I would die, how I'm gonna miss these small little things in everyday life. Like I was sitting in my car driving, I was listening to music and a good song came up and I would just think that if, I was, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna miss music so much. I'm gonna miss just driving around listening to music. I'm gonna miss laying in bed a Sunday morning. I'm gonna miss seeing someone you haven't seen in a long time. Like I just, I just thought about all these things. And there was moments when I, when I was thinking, when I like kind of pictured myself calling my friends and my family and just telling them that I didn't have a long time left to live and that I loved them and that I want, want to see all of them before, before it's over. But 
I managed to keep myself thinking that I'm not gonna die, I'm gonna live. This is treatable, I'm gonna be cured, I'm gonna live. I'm gonna keep striving to become the greatest version of myself and have a happy and thriving life. And I kept doing that and luckily with all the amazing friends and family and everything I have in my life, they kept keeping me motivated for that. Even though there was a lot of people I didn't tell because I was just so in my head, I was just all I wanted to do was someone to hold me and just tell me that everything's gonna be okay and at the same time I just tried to figure everything out with living, with insurance, with everything, every practical thing and then I simply had to wait until doctors would call me back and tell me how bad it was. I actually have something I wrote in my journal when um, before chemotherapy started. I think it was before I knew what kind of cancer it was. I just knew I probably had cancer but I had no idea what cancer it was. So this is just gonna be a little, a little piece of what I wrote in my journal at that time. And I'm gonna try not to cry too much at least, but it's, it's pretty emotional. My title is Waiting Game. Despite everything, I still think that the worst kind of life is when you don't live at all. A life unlived where you do nothing, see nothing, and learn nothing. Right now, I at least have something to live for. I will learn something huge from this and will be able to use it to help others and be more compassionate. Maybe this is something I need to go through in order to find my purpose. It will probably be fantastic, terrible, scary, weird, surprising, hard, easy, eye-opening, and isn't that better than to simply feel nothing? I think it is, because it is at least something that will develop my reality and probably my loved ones as well. I will keep learning to love myself, to let myself cry, to accept help, to listen to my gut and whatever happens, I know it happens for a good reason. Everything falls into place like it should and nothing is scary, not even death is scary. I also know that I want to and I will live. I have a lot more to give to this world before it's my turn to pass away. And I want to do it with genuine friends and family who does nothing but adds up to the fire in my soul. All is well, I will do this. And then a little heart. Also when you hear that you have cancer, it's like a lamp lights up inside of you and tells you that, hey, life is precious, life is fragile, anything can happen at any time, nothing is for sure. Take nothing for granted. Take each day as it is your last, basically. And I also realized, you know, how, what really matters. And that's, it wasn't like I started thinking about things or even places that I've been to. What always came to mind at the end of the day was who has impacted my life, who has made me laugh, who has made me feel safe, even just like an embrace who has made me feel safe even when they don't say anything. Who makes my time worthwhile? And what makes my time worth worthwhile? And I started thinking about all these things that really matters and all these things that doesn't matter. And I just kept thinking, I'm not done. I want to live, I want to live. Please let me live. And I finally got the diagnosis, which was Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's amazingly treatable and curable today, which is great. And regarding chemotherapy, I would say that in the beginning for me, it wasn't that hard. It wasn't that bad. I could do most things that I could normally do. I would say up to maybe the fourth treatment. And I had treatment every other Friday. I've heard different things about the hair. My doctor said most, most people lose their hair with this chemotherapy that I'm taking. I heard or read somewhere else that 70% um, of people lose their hair. I am not completely bald. I have a little bit of hair left and I'm gonna show you guys. So this is how it looks like for me. I kind of have baby hair right now. Like it's very, very soft and very, very thin. I do miss hair though. I really do. You know, some people can really rock a bald head. Um, I personally prefer hair. Um, and I really miss hair because I haven't had hair for like five months now. Wigs are really good though. This wig was actually donated to me by a very lovely lady who also went through cancer. If you for some reason would need a wig going through chemotherapy, I would really suggest you to look up 
free services before buying a very expensive one. There's some hospitals that have free wig services. There's some organizations that has wig services for people going through chemotherapy and donates wigs. So definitely look those things up before buying a wig. And regarding eyebrows and eyelashes, I still have them, although they thinned out a lot. Other chemo side effects would be my nails got really dark, my skin is drier, and the nausea has been the worst side effect for me. Although there are very good nausea preventing medicine you get from your doctor, but especially the first few days after each chemo infusion, I am very nauseous. The worst thing, taste-wise, would be water. It just tastes like medicine or like metal to me. There's also a term called chemo brain. Um, it's basically when you feel very groggy. It can be hard with concentration, with memory. Sometimes I've even had a hard time talking and like expressing myself verbally because the, the words don't come out right or I stumble on them or I can't remember the words. And chemo brain can be very exhausting and very tiring. There has been times when I've just had to stay in bed all day because it's been so awful walking around or standing up or doing whatever. You kind of just feel detached from yourself sometimes. And you can say between each chemo infusion, there's like a good week and a bad week. So I would have chemo on Friday and I would usually feel like crap until like Tuesday. I would start to feel normal again maybe Wednesday or Thursday before the next chemo and then you just go back down to the rabbit hole. And it's been like that for six months. These are very strong drugs. And um, it's hard not to identify yourself with them. It's hard because sometimes I have been standing in front of the mirror and I've been standing in front of the mirror bald. My eyelashes and eyebrows are just fading away and I feel like my, my whole self is just fading away. And I ask myself, who am I? What am I doing? I start to question myself as a person. I start to question my personality. Because chemo makes you not want to hang out with people all the time. Chemo makes you have to choose to stay home even if something really fun is going on outside. And you know, some things you can control. Some things you can push yourself to do it or you have to just find the motivation. But when you have chemotherapy drugs inside of you, sometimes you just can't because you just feel too awful to function. I would just feel too tired to function or too tired to socialize because of how these drugs make me feel. And sometimes it's hard not to question yourself as a person. And that's not what you're supposed to do during this time. During a time like this, when I feel like this, I don't want to question myself as a person and I want to take a break from personal development and I don't want to make big decisions because I feel like my brain doesn't really work the same. I feel like my brain is just pushing me back to be the person that I used to be or want to be and to do the things I want to do. But it can be very empowering at the same time to stand there and say, you know what? No matter what I'm going through, no matter how shitty I feel today, I'm always worthy of love, of understanding. I'm going through cancer right now, and I can't think about how I act, how I act around everyone all the time and please everyone else. It can be confusing, it can be scary, because I don't only have cancer, but I feel like I'm losing myself, you know? But at the same time, we all find a way to cope and I would say that if I would say five things that kept me uplifted and positive would be first have the right kind of people around you have people that only supports you and wants the best for you drink a lot of water and if water tastes like poop then you put water flavor inside of it take a walk or go outside even if it's just around the block find all the movies, the games, the TV shows you've been wanting to play or watch that you haven't had time for yet Surround yourself with animals. I've lived with the dog the, the entire time I went through chemotherapy. And just a few weeks ago, but I wish I would've gotten them sooner, I got two rats. Even if, even if some people are scared of rats, I would say that they're awesome pets. And you even start to realize that you, you even love the little disturbing things on them, like their wormy little tail or their humongous balls. Pets and animals are great and Misty the dog is behind me over there. Misty! Hi, Misty. And I might also be in a little more unique situation as I 
I'm an international student and I stayed I stayed abroad even though I was diagnosed with cancer and some people might ask why and I would just say that I feel like getting diagnosed with cancer here because I used to live here before so I was already familiar with the place at the end of the day it feels like it was here I was supposed to be diagnosed and it was here I was supposed to be treated this has nothing to do with that I didn't want to go back to my family or friends in Sweden. It doesn't mean that I felt very lonely at times, especially in the beginning. This is all within me. And I feel like Sweden at this time doesn't give me the answers. I feel like I grow more internally and externally here. I didn't want cancer to ruin that for me. I didn't want cancer to ruin what I already had accomplished and what I was aiming for. Once again, there was a lot of things I had to do in order to see if I was able to stay or not. And at the end of it all, I was finally able to stay because my insurance was good enough and because I had amazing people around me that wanted to help and support. I wouldn't say that I would have given up if I went back to Sweden because in my opinion, the only way you probably give up when you get diagnosed with cancer is if you just decide to die. If your cancer is treatable and or curable and you decide to do nothing, then I would feel like you would give up. But if you went back home, being an international student, to be close to your family and friends, I totally understand why you would do that. And I totally understand why people ask me why not. But for me, after several years of self-development and practice of self-love, and just realizing that home is defined by many different things, but if you define home as something that is within you instead of outside of you, it becomes a different thing. I would personally rather want to define home as somewhere you feel happy and somewhere you feel safe and somewhere you feel like you grow and expand your knowledge. And home doesn't have to be one place. And at the time, I felt like California was that place for me. And I was lucky enough to have friends come here to visit me and support me and to also have a lot of people here to support me. And I also want to tell you that if I can do it, you can do it too. I'm not necessarily talking about staying abroad from your home country when you get diagnosed with cancer. Some lessons I've had from this whole experience is regarding attitude and optimist and positivity. I've had a positive attitude for most part in my life, but I just want to put it out there that I've been working a lot to get where I am and I still have a long way to go to get where I want to be. It's all about your attitude and your motivation, how far you want to go and how far you can tell yourself within that you're able to go and what you're worth. And if you don't know where to begin with personal development, I began with reading a book about self-esteem and that's where, when I got into the whole thing. And I think that was a big part why I made the choices I made because I've developed a safety inside of me that even though I was so far away from my family and friends back home, I was so far away from my base and my childhood areas and where I can relate to something. I still felt the safety inside of me staying here and surround myself with people that I might not have not known as long, but I could still see the people around me that I have here the same way that I would have seen my friends and family going back home to Sweden. It's a beautiful thing when you go through something, when you go through cancer or maybe some other illness, people open up to you differently and you can really see that everyone goes through their own struggles. Whether it's an addiction, whether it's another illness, whether it's someone who's lost their legs, we all go through something. We will always need help one way or another in life. This whole experience also created a lot of fun memories. For example, my friends who came to visit, and not only were they able to come here and be amazing friends, take a break from their own lives and just be supportive. They also came here to see a new place, to see California, to maybe get a little glimpse of my life over here. And I've been having so much fun these last six months, despite that I've been so tired. And it's also been the most vulnerable time in my life, the most scariest time in my life. But I've kept my hopes up. Because I spoke to my aunt who also had who also had cancer earlier in her life. We spoke about that I was diagnosed with cancer and she, she was very supportive and she said, when you're not scared of dying, you're not scared of living either. I don't know if that really makes sense unless you've had cancer or unless you've had a cancer diagnosis, but it basically means that we're all gonna face death 
we don't have to think about that right now. What's important to think about right now is that we're actually alive and that we have a life to live and that we have the freedom to choose what life we want to live. Even though I now know that all the cancer is gone from my body, I will always keep that in mind, that we have the freedom to choose our lives and we have the freedom to choose to grow and get better and self-improve. We have the choice to surround ourselves with people that brings us energy or that just takes our energy. And I've also realized that life is always, life is forever changing. Nothing's ever gonna stay the same forever. So really just try to enjoy every day. And yet now I've been deep down in the rabbit hole, feeling the shittiest I've ever felt in my whole life. Feeling so tired that I don't know what to do with myself. The good thing that comes out of that is that I'm gonna see and appreciate the, the energy and the, the high times I have much more now because I've been so low. I listened to a podcast where this girl said that she thinks that life is about feeling and that includes feeling the highest of high and feeling the lowest of the lowest and everything in between. Even though chemotherapy was so shitty to go through, I will have so many beautiful things to look back to. Just the fact how great people are and how helpful people are and just the fact that I'm alive and that I'm gonna be well soon and just the fact that I have people in the world who loves me and that I love and once again that I have the freedom to choose my life and to just enjoy it while it lasts and maybe that's the same for many other struggles that people have I've been working on myself to accept myself fully as I am as a person for years but chemotherapy made me so lost and it made me question my whole self as a person you just have to find your way of coping and just take one day at a time and make it worthwhile for a way that works for you. If you're not going through cancer and you don't know how it is to have a cancer diagnosis but you might know someone who has, I would just suggest that the smallest of support, like at least I would never expect anyone to have like pass their life for me in any way but just the smallest amount of support, whether it just be a text message was so helpful and even though I'm a little skeptical with the whole social media consumption today just like funny snapshots from friends would make my mornings when I just woke up feeling like crap just find these small things in everyday life and like right after chemo me and whoever was hanging with me would like just take a relaxing weekend and just watch movies and take some walks and just do whatever I had energy to do and once again, despite that I was going through chemotherapy at this time, these are still moments that I will cherish forever and that I will always remember and that I will be smiling about. I know that however bad I might feel, nauseous, groggy, not being able to express myself clearly, I knew that within me, within me is the healthy, happy, growing, social, ambitious cherry, even though there were times when I felt like I was none of those things. My advice would be, Whatever you're going through, don't let it define you. We all are tiny universes that walk around Earth. I believe we all have this inner power within us to just become the greatest versions of ourselves. Sometimes it might take time and you gotta be patient. But once again, life is forever changing. Ooh, it's getting dark. Uh, okay, one last thing I have to say. A friend recommended a tea for me that I've been drinking during the whole treatment. It's called Essiac tea, and I'm not gonna talk much about it in this video, but, but if you're going through cancer, or if you're just looking for an immune booster, you should really check this tea out. So, the last treatment is tomorrow, and I ain't even mad. And I'm gonna post this video tomorrow because it's the official day. I hope you learned something from this video. This is once again just my opinions and views of the world and of this experience but i hope i taught you something or inspired you in any way i am so excited to start living my life as a cancer survivor i should play gloria gainer's i will survive song in the ending credits <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you will have a wonderful day and a wonderful life and that you choose a life that makes you happy.